it's clear that for any photographer just starting out, one of the most difficult things is to exercise your creativity, judgment, and vision to figure out what problems to solve in a photograph. So no matter what software you're using, whether it's Lightroom or Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, that's really not the question. The question is, where do I even begin to make adjustments to this photograph? But what's wrong with the picture? Answering that question is probably the most difficult, but also the most important. The minute that you can figure out what's wrong with the picture, then you know what to fix. So in this series of videos, we've broken down problems with a photograph into three categories. First is exposure, then comes color, then comes the creative process. In this video, we're going to just talk about exposure. So what is exposure and why would I start here versus the other two options? Well, let's tackle what is exposure first. Exposure, simply put, is the amount of light captured in an image. If we were to take that a step further, what is exposure actually made up of? Just to keep this simple and not overcomplicated, it's pretty much just the bright stuff, the dark stuff, and everything in between. If we were to break that down into photography terminology, that basically means highlights, shadows, and midtones. So let's break that down one more time. Here we are, we have exposure, we have highlights, which equals the bright stuff, shadows, which equals the dark stuff, and contrast, which basically is the separation between lights and darks, better known as our midtones. And all three of these components make up exposure. So now that we know what exposure is, why would I fix exposure first? Simply put, I think it's one of the most simplest things to see and identify visually. As a photographer, we're all visual creatures. We can look at a photograph and know whether it's too dark or too bright or somewhere in between. We can even tell if certain parts of the picture are brighter than others and maybe those are the areas of the photograph that we want to fix first. Basically put, exposure is an excellent place to start. Once we've realized that exposure is the problem, we now know how to break Break it down. So let's practice fixing exposure. So here we are inside the Lightroom module. I'm in the library mode. So when I look at this picture, the first thing I'm asking myself is what's wrong with the picture? Well, clearly exposure is the problem. Now that's not to say that I don't want to fix color or do some creative edits, but this is one step at a time here. We're baby stepping our way through the process and that's going to help us figure out what we need to fix and why. So we're starting with exposure. So I'm going to take this image over to the develop module where we'll begin to make some adjustments to the exposure. So here we are inside the develop module, one of the first things that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit shift tab and that's going to take away all of the panels that I have that are distracting me. But I need to bring back the panel that I'm actually going to use to modify this picture. So if I head over here to the right, I can hover over this little arrow here and when I click on it, that will actually position my tools panel here to the right hand side. So basically I've got my image and my tools panel and nothing else. Now, as we said in the beginning of this video, what, what, what I'm gonna use in order to fix this picture are highlights, shadows, and contrast. We've already established that those three elements make up exposure. So you might be asking yourself, well, Adam, I see that there's an exposure slider already there waiting for me. My answer to you is yes, there is. But to me, that exposure slider is simply an optional adjustment. I'm only going to use it if I absolutely need need to. Now why would that be? The reason is because exposure is going to adjust the entire photograph. In other words, it's going to make everything brighter or everything darker. I don't really want to make everything brighter or everything darker. What I want to do is target the problem areas. So in this photograph, clearly the image is too dark. As we've said before, we know that shadows will help us fix anything that's too dark. So if I head on over to my shadow slider and begin to bump that up, we will see that now our image begins to get a little bit brighter. But I've maxed out my shadow slider. I'm all the way at 100%. And if I could, I'd really like to go to 200% or 300%. But I don't have that ability here. Well, now is when I'm going to go to the exposure slider because I need a little bit more leverage. I need to get a little brighter. In this example, we move the shadow slider to the right. So I'm going to move the exposure slider to the right in the same direction. And as I do, the picture's going to get brighter. That's probably where I want to be. Not looking too bad. If I hit the backslash button right above my return 
return key, I can see the before my adjustment. And if I click it again, I'll see the after my adjustment. When I look at the before and after, yes, I fixed the dark stuff, but what I've also done is I've ruined the bright stuff. If I go back to before and you look inside the window, you'll see that clearly there's a little bit more sky available to me there. I could actually see the blue sky in the background. When I go to the after adjustment, you'll see that the changes that I made, I lost that detail in the window. Well, I need to bring that back. We've already established that highlights controls the bright stuff. So if I go to highlights and move my highlights ladder down, here I am retrieving the bright stuff. So in this event, I have fixed my shadows, I have fixed my highlights, and therefore have fixed exposure. And finally, if I wanted to get a little bit more separation between my lights and darks, I could move my contrast slider up just for a little added punch. And there, just like that, I have fixed exposure in this image. Here's my before and here's my after. And what once looked like an image that was clearly an image that could not be saved just by knowing the right tools to use, I think we've salvaged a pretty interesting photograph. Okay, Adam, so you've shown me how to fix an image that's too dark. What do I do about an image that's too bright? Well, glad you asked because I'm going to show you how to fix that next. I'm back now with an image that is clearly too bright for my taste. As soon as I seen this photograph, I loved all the layers of the snow and the fog or the steam and the mountains and the clouds. It's almost like a frappe, something you want to eat. I don't really like frappes, so I'm not going to eat this photograph. Now, if it were a donut, I would probably definitely eat this photo, but that's neither here nor there, and that's not why we're here now. So the problem, like I said, with this image is it's clearly too bright. So we're going to go through and we're going to fix this exposure problem using the exact same techniques that we used in the previous image, but we're going to do it in reverse order. So when I look at this photograph, I see that the image is too bright, and I know that highlights is going to help me fix the bright stuff. So immediately, that's the first slider I'm going to touch. I'm going to head on over to highlights, and I'm going to drag it down, and as I do, the image will begin to get darker. If I run out of room and I need to go a little bit further, then I go to exposure as an optional adjustment. In this case, since I moved highlights to the left, I'm also going to move exposure to the left, and I'm going to keep moving it until I get this where I want it. Now, as a result of making the image that was too bright, making it darker, I have also darkened down my shadows. How do I know that? Well, my shadows represent the dark stuff. So if I go over to shadows and move it in the opposite direction, I can actually bring back some of the details in the shadows that I had lost. So with using the backslash button above my return key, I'll show you a quick before and after. And for a little added bonus, I could always go to contrast, which is also an exposure element, and maybe pull my contrast up ever so slightly just for a little added exposure effect. A little before, a little after. And we haven't even addressed color or creative techniques yet. We'll address those in the other videos. But this is a great place to start. If you're unsure what to do first, check your exposure, use these techniques to fix it. If it's color or creative problems that you're having, you'll find that information in the next video. And that's our tip of the week. If you like this video, be sure to comment, like, or subscribe to our channel where we will be putting out new tips each and every week.